Mother's Day for all you wonderful mothers out there. My own mom, I love you. <laughs> we're we're going to uh, worship now, so let's get into it. Praise God. Hallelujah.
the joy come in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Amen. Hallelujah. I think oftentimes we forget just how close God is to us and how he's always next to us. And we forget that when we weep, he weeps with us. And when we're angry, he's angry with us. And when we're joyful, he's joyful too. And he walks through the fire with us. He walks through those waters with us. He walks through the lowest valleys with us. And he walks on the highest mountains as well. Amen. And as we roll into this next song that's all about waiting, we think about the promises that he's given to us in our own lives and the promise that he's going to come back someday and that there's going to be no more pain, no more sorrow. Amen. Hallelujah.
God. Thank you, Lord God, for your love, for your patience with us as your children, God. Thank you for teaching us and guiding us and being in the storm with us. No matter how deep the storm can get, you are there through it all. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord God, for your love, for your patience with us as your children, God. Thank you for teaching us and guiding us and being in the storm with us. No matter how deep the storm can get, you are there through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Within the arms. 
Welcome to Just Church. Happy Mother's Day. Mom, if you're watching, I love you so much. Today, we have an awesome message coming up from Pastor Kevin as Pastor John and Rachel are away in Arizona visiting their daughter. Um, the only announcements we have for today are that every weeknight, 6.30, uh, we have men's and women's video conferences um, during this quarantine. Uh, it's really great to meet up with these people, um, get on the video chat, and just uh, be social in this uh, crazy time. Uh, if you're new with us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and on our website at justchurch.net, where you can also fill out a virtual um, connection card. And you can also link up on our Facebook page to see all of the happenings in the church and everything that's going on. And um, like, and uh, for all of our regular people, like, comment, and share this video so we can reach as many people as possible uh, for Jesus. And if you would, welcome. Um, Join me with a prayer. Father, I thank you so much for this church. Lord, I just thank you for your son Jesus and all that he's done in our lives. Lord, I pray that this message today is a blessing to many. And we pray for all the mothers as they've been such a blessing to all of us. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, good morning, church. God bless you and happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Uh, today is a very special day for mothers all across the nation, and I don't know if other countries uh, celebrate Mother's Day. If they don't, they should. So today, we're taking a little deviation from our normal um, series structure. Uh, Pastor John and Rachel are traveling for a week or so. They're out in Arizona with um, Julia, their daughter, and I'm filling in for a special Mother's Day sermon. So here I am, and uh, ta-da. I want to um, just take a quick moment to open up in prayer because we all need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit to preach. You need the Holy Spirit to hear what God has to say for you, to you. And um, we just need more of the Holy Spirit everywhere. So Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we just cast ourselves upon your grace and your mercy. God, we are so thankful that you have called us together as your children, that we are your church, your church universal. God, we thank you that you are present with us for where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus. There you are right in our midst. So we welcome you here today, Jesus, and we welcome Jesus into the homes of all the people who will be hearing this message in just a couple days. Lord, we pray for uh, Pastor John and Rachel and Julia and their whole family as they're traveling, that you would just bless them and give them um, just an abundance of grace and blessing as they have their time to visit. And God, we pray for all the moms that are listening today. Uh, we pray that you would continue to strengthen them. Lord, that you would use this time to just um, speak to their hearts. Lord, let your, your word, the word of God, minister to the hearts of moms and women everywhere. And Lord, may we um, recognize just how special our mothers and those prominent women in our lives are and bless them all, God, we, play, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So I wanted to uh, open up this morning with just a little um, a test. Now, I know that there are a lot of moms out there. Uh, my wife is one, the mother of three children and a grandmother to um, five more. And um, it's not an easy task being a mom always. It's a rewarding one, as I understand it, but it's not always easy. And there are probably many of you young women out there who uh, maybe are going to be married in the very near future, <coughs> um, and maybe you're going to have children uh, sometime in the future. Uh, maybe you're, you're just a, a really young girl, and your dream is one day to, to grow up and, and find that special guy that God is, has set aside for you so that you can also be a wife and a mother one day. But if you are not a mother and you're planning to be one, I have a little test for you to see if you're really well suited for motherhood. So here's the are you ready for motherhood test. There's a grocery store test. And what you do is you borrow one or two small animals. Goats work really well for this. And you take them with you as you shop at the grocery store. Always keep them in your sight and pay for anything they eat or damage. And then there's a dressing test. Obtain one large, unhappy, live octopus. They turn bright red when they are unhappy. Stuff, into, stuff this octopus into a small net bag and make sure that all the arms stay inside. Then there's a feeding test. 
Obtain a large plastic milk jug. Fill halfway with water. Suspend from the ceiling with a stout cord. Start the jug swinging. Try to insert spoonfuls of soggy cereal, like Fruit Loops or Cheerios or something like that, into the mouth of the jug while pretending to be an airplane. Now dump the contents of the jug on the floor. That was the feeding test. Now we have the night test. Prepare by obtaining a small cloth bag and fill it with eight to 12 pounds of sand. Soak it thoroughly in water. At 8 p.m., begin to waltz and hum with the bag until about 9 p.m. Lay down your bag and set your alarm for 10 p.m. Get up, pick up your bag, and sing every song you have ever heard to the bag. Make, about, make up about a dozen more and sing these too until 4 a.m. Set the alarm for 5 a.m., get up, make breakfast, and keep this up for five years. And look cheerful while you do it. Here's the physical test. Obtain a large beanbag chair and attach it to the front of your clothes. Leave it there for nine months. Keep this up. I mean, now after nine months, remove 10 beans. Now there you go. There are the five important tests for motherhood. Moms get what I'm talking about. Maybe uh, some of the other ladies um, don't get the humor yet, but your moms and your mom-like people in your life will, will share it with you. Uh, being the husband of a, um, of a mother, I can tell you that I can see much of how this testing really falls into real life. My wife is a saint, and I'll tell you, and she, she's done a fabulous job with our three children. But now let's move on to what Scripture has to say about moms. And, and I want to... I want to kind of expand this a little bit because today is Mother's Day and we are specifically honoring and um, extending our gratitude to our moms. But if you're not a mom, if you're a woman who maybe you're married and you don't have children yet or maybe you're waiting to be married or maybe you're just a young woman, this message is generally inclusive of all of you fabulous ladies because you are a special, special breed. And we want to take this time today to honor you uh, in ways that God would have us honor you. And God speaks specifically about woman in scripture. Um, in days of old, in uh, even in biblical times, women were generally considered to be um, maybe a kind of a secondary class in the population. Uh, you've, I'm sure you've read scriptures in the Bible where it talks about women not speaking in church. You've probably seen scriptures in the Old Testament where women uh, may have been treated um, almost like servants or slaves in some cases. Um, and throughout history, thankfully now as we are, are growing in our understanding of uh, equality of the genders, but throughout history, women have always suffered kind of a lesser role in society. But God in scripture kind of broke all of those rules. I'm sure you can think of other religions where women to this day are maybe looked down upon and not treated as equals. Well, God is, isn't up for that gig. God has always been a God who has used women in very powerful ways. There is a whole proverb specifically about the virtues of uh, mothers and wives and women in general. And we're gonna look at that. And that's in Proverbs chapter 31. And I'm just gonna read through um, verses 10 through 31 for you. Uh, there's an interesting note here is that um, Proverbs 31 is an acrostic poem. When you read it, it's kind of written like a poem. It's like in two stanza lines. Um, and if you were Hebrew, you could read it in Hebrew. And if you were Hebrew, you would see that the beginning letter of each of those 22 lines from 10 to 31 is a letter from the Hebrew alphabet, starting with the equivalent of the A and all the way down to the equivalent of the Z. So not only is it a really inspiring portion of scripture, but God played with it in a way that makes it really special um, by, by presenting it as an acrostic poem. And if you're not sure what an acrostic poem is, look it up because it's, you know, you've seen them. If you take uh, the word love, L-O-V-E, the first line starts with an L, then O, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this whole series of scriptures is like that. And I just think that's pretty cool. My daughter is actually a Hebrew uh, scholar, I guess I would call her. She got her, she got her degree in Hebrew. And um, she would tell you that it's, it's pretty amazing when you see these kind of things just kind of... Um, kind of stuck in the Bible 
in, when most people wouldn't even realize it, but God just does some really cool things with Scripture sometimes because God is God. So Proverbs chapter 31, and we're going to start with verse 10. Um, this is a proverb that was written by a king, King Lemuel, or Lemuel. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. We don't really have any other record of this king's name, but it says right there in scripture that he wrote it. And he is addressing this series of scriptures or these words to someone he's referring to as his son. The name Lemuel means for God or dedicated to God. And the scripture says that it's the sayings of King Lemuel. An inspired utterance his mother taught him so King Lemuel's mother taught him these principles, and now the king is teaching those principles to his son. Why would he be teaching these principles to his son? Well, he's probably preparing his son to be ruler one day, and these are important um, points that he wants to make to him as he's growing in his household. So Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10, reads this way. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at, at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, and does not eat the, uh, I'm sorry, her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Now, the literal um, discourse here, the words that I just read to you, don't really fit well into our modern culture. I don't think that there are many moms that are, um, are, are making, are working with wool and flax or using spindles to actually um, create their own yarn. I'm sure that when you hear scripture talk about um, a woman being like a merchant ship bringing food from afar, you're like, why is a woman like a merchant ship? But let's kind of break this down a little bit because what this series of scriptures is referring to is really God's idea of a fully virtuous woman. And if you think about what I'm about to tell you, I bet that you can, um, you can relate to this to the woman that's in your life. At least I hope you will. This is an opportunity for us guys, us husbands, to really think about the, uh, just how blessed we are to have our wives and our lives. And it doesn't matter what state your relationship was, is in at the moment. Um, you know, you could be on, you know, you know, floating in the clouds in love and be so excited about your relationship, or you could really be down in the, in the pits of despair. I don't know. But one thing that we can recognize and we can remind ourselves of is that if we are married in the sight of God, God has put us together and two have become one flesh. And even if things aren't great at the moment, uh, I pray that they're not, but even if they're not great at the moment, God has still bound you two together and you are inseparable in spirit. And so what God has, has put together, let no man put asunder, 
even us men, let's not put asunder our wives by not giving them the credit that they're due by withholding love or withholding praise or not appreciating the way that they're supposed to be. This is really what this message is about today, I think. So, a good wife, very beginning, verses 10 there, who can find a good wife? Who can find a good wife? Uh, I know many young men, maybe not so young men, who are looking for a good wife. Well, who can find a good wife? What is your plan to find a good wife? Well, let me give you a little hint. Proverbs 31 here describes that good wife. So if you're looking for your perfect mate or your perfect wife um, anywhere outside of God's plan, his kingdom, I mean, if you're looking for your wife down at the local bar, you might not be finding a good wife. You might be finding a good looking wife. You might be finding, you know, a fun wife. But what, what are you really looking for in terms of a person, the woman that you're going to spend the rest of your life with? Now, I got to qualify that statement because when I met my wife, we weren't at a church conference. We weren't at, it was not a spiritual thing. It was like, hey, baby, you look cute, you know? It was like, so our, our early days, and my wife actually was a brand new Christian at that time, and she was instrumental in me coming to the Lord in, in a very powerful way. But we weren't two people that met in church and already had a foundation in Scripture, or already had a foundational relationship with the Lord. So if you haven't begun there, th that's okay, because God, God is a redeemer, Right? Jesus is a redeemer. So regardless of where you're starting in a relationship, God has it under control. But if you're looking, let me suggest to you that uh, if you're, especially if you're a Christian young man, that you keep your eyes fixed on a good wife. The, the one that you can find is the one who is virtuous. Doesn't mean that she can't be good looking, that she can't be fun and, uh, and all that. But if you, you, you can find, you know, uh, you ever heard of fool's gold? It's this mineral that looks just like gold. And many people have been fooled by the fact that it looks like gold and think it's highly valuable. But at, when you take it to the bank to actually cash it in, you find out that it's worthless. So just because something sparkles and something looks pretty um, does not mean that that's necessarily a good thing. You want to look for a good wife. A virtuous woman. What does virtue mean? Virtue is just speaking to a person who has integrity and is ethical and has good qualities. Not uh, just a, um, a good emotional state, not just somebody who's smart or funny or whatever, but virtue runs deeper because virtue speaks to a heart state, the state of a heart. And so a virtuous woman in the English, the word literally means um, it refers to strength of moral character. We would call that virtue. In Hebrew, the Hebrew language tends to be a little bit broader and be a little bit more expansive. The Hebrew word has a broader application referring to strength and valor as of those who are valiant in battle or strong financially. The word speaks of ability, determination, and strength of character. So when we're looking for a virtuous woman, it's not you know, the woman who spends all of her time on her knees, you know, praying and is so spiritual that, um, you know, it's hard to actually have a relationship with that person. But a virtuous woman is somebody who is strong. She's a warrior. She's a prayer warrior. She's, she's a fighter. She'll fight for her children. She'll fight for her, her husband. She's strong in, in her value. She's valuable because she has gifts and she has talents that um, are recognized from the people around her. So virtue isn't a weak thing. Virtue is a strong thing. So being virtuous, finding a virtuous woman is really highly desirable. Her virtue um, affects all those around her, particularly her family, and even most particularly her husband. In verses, you can find that in verses 10 and 12. If you've got your Bible, you can just open up to Proverbs 31 and just follow, follow along. I'm not going to read, there's a bunch of scriptures. I'm not going to read every scripture. I'll just make reference to um, those scriptures, for example, now in verses 10 through 12. Um, her virtue affects her husband. Wives, moms, 
The power that you have over the lives of people in your life is incredible. I don't know that there is anybody more influential in our society besides a mother and a wife. And I mean that. I, I look at my own life. What a mess I was when I got married. And my wife has helped shape me and um, improve me in ways that are not even, um, I can't even begin to convey. Her impact on my life is so um, significant that I can't even imagine my life today without my wife. When I think back to my mom, and my mom's been, uh, has passed away for about two and a half years now, I can think back to the earliest days of my life when my mom, you know, things that she said to me, things, things that she spoke to me, um, times when she nurtured me, times when she picked me up when I was crying. I can remember these little snippets, even from very, very early days, and remember that feeling of security and of love and of, of just goodness. I, could, I can remember her virtue in my life. So, so moms, wives, you have tremendous power over especially, I would say, the men in your, in your life. And that's something to be proud of. And it's something for men to respect and realize that it's a good, good thing. And I know that there are men all over the place who are rolling their eyes. Like, you know, if you knew my wife, you know, she would <laughs> nag you until your ears fell off. And, you know, she, yeah, well, <laughs> peoples is peoples, right? But if you are a smart man, you will listen to your wife, not just with, you know, uh, not just with your ears, but with your heart. Because let me tell you something, your wife will save you time and time and time again. And if, if there's men in the room, I bet I can get an amen from you because my wife has saved me time and time again from just being an idiot or doing something stupid or um, just generally from um, uh, idiocy. So, verses 10 through 12 speak of her virtue, and it says, The heart of her husband can safely trust her. He need not fear that she will run up a terrible credit card debt or spend all his money in taking advantage of him. But she is a true helpmeet, complementing and completing her husband. So, wives, moms, this is where you become the power behind the machine. You know, you've probably heard the saying that behind every successful man is a good woman, uh, I'm pretty sure that's true almost all of the time. Because men, as strong as we like to pretend we are, and as macho and as much testosterone as we exude, really, on the inside, we need help. We absolutely need help. In fact, you should turn to your wife right now and say, honey, I need your help. You can do it, come on. Okay, good job. Because you do, I do, we do. If you're a young, if you're a child, you're still living at home with your mom and um, you feel like she is just forever on your case and she doesn't understand you and she won't let you do the things that you want to do and she makes you turn off the Xbox and she won't let you, you know, play on your iPhone during dinner, all those things that it's like, you know, you just get so frustrated with, your mom is protecting you. And one day you're going to realize that that protection was very valuable. She is trying to help you raise up to be a man or a woman of God that is going to be well-rounded and balanced and stable and to help you be successful. So listen to your mom when she's nagging at you for, the th for certain things because she knows what you don't know. And I know that when you're young, it's hard to believe that, but it's true. It's absolutely true. Um, a husband can trust your wife. A, a, a husband that has a virtuous, godly woman, he, he, is, he can sleep at night peacefully. He can go to work during the day and have every confidence that things are in control at home. He doesn't have to worry about things, you know, he doesn't have to worry about uh, the credit card being run up or being taken advantage of. At least he shouldn't. A virtuous woman wouldn't do that. Um, but he knows that his heart is protected, and he knows that he is working to protect his wife's heart as well. He can trust his wife. And if his wife is a mother, he can trust his mother, I mean his wife, with his children. He knows that his children are being raised 
in a home that is glorifying to God and um, is in an environment where the Holy Spirit can rule and reign. And really, that's the goal, isn't it? Isn't, isn't the goal for our families to be in an environment where God can move, um, setting an environment for, um, uh, for the virtues of God to be manifest in, in all of the family members, a place where miracles can happen? That's where the power of being a mom and being a wife rests because, let's face it, Women set the tone in the house. Very, very often, women set the tone. It's like we just watched uh, Big Fat Greek Wedding uh, the other day, and there's a scene where the mom is speaking to her daughter, and the daughter's all distraught because she's marrying a non-Greek guy, and, and she's asking, am I ruining daddy's life, and um, how, you know, how are we going to get dad to agree to this, whatever? And she says something, just paraphrased to this effect. She goes, remember, you know, the, the man may be the head of the family, but the woman... She's the neck, and she can turn the head whichever way she wants to. And this is true. It is true. And that's, that is actually a very comforting thing if you're a man, a husband, and you've got a virtuous wife because you can trust her to turn the head in ways that are best for the family and best for your relationship and best for you. Women have a lot of power. Um, it refers, so I just made reference to this word help meet. And that in the uh, uh, King James Version, it says help meet, I believe. In the NIV Version, it talks about um, being a helper. Um, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Now the Lord God said, It is not good or beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary to him. So your wife, if God has put you together. She is your helper. She is not um, against you. She is for you. Even if it may seem at times she's against you, she's for you. If she's a woman of God, she might be against you because you don't need to go out and buy a new set of golf clubs right now or, um, you know, or uh, go and, and get that uh, Harley Davidson for 50 grand that you so desperately want, Tammy. Um, for summer riding, you know, she's like, no, maybe that's not the smartest thing to do right now in the middle of a global pandemic. But she is, um, she is a virtuous wife, a virtuous mother is going to help you become the best that you can be. They move forward together and find to fulfill God's purpose together. Remember, you're one flesh. So guys, we can't escape our wives. Wives, we can't escape our, our mothers. And in the house, kids, you can't just pack your bags and leave because you're upset at what mom has told you you can or can't do. You are bound together. And if that binding is together in the name of Jesus and um, in a household where God is lifted up, then there is great profit, there is great blessing, and um, there is great reward in that household. So when the Proverbs is talking about women doing things like this, um, rising up early, preparing clothing, uh, preparing meals. It says that her light doesn't go out at night, and she's the first one up in the morning, and she's taking care of affairs, even financial affairs. She's, um, she's preparing uh, clothing and fabrics, um, you know, linens and purple to be able to sell. Some, some wives and some mothers are very, very industrious. Uh, Lydia, I remember in the book of Acts, she was a, a woman who heard the teachings of the apostles, and she was a seller. It says that she was a seller of purple, uh, purple fabrics. Purple fabrics were very, very valuable. Purple was a very difficult color dye to come by. So when you, know, you could find purple things, that's why Purple is a royal color. Kings would have purple curtains and linens and all kinds of stuff. So Lydia was an example of a woman who was not only a godly woman listening and learning from the apostles' teaching, but she was a profitable businesswoman as well. That's a virtuous woman. I remember my mom. She, when I was growing up, my dad worked. We had six kids in the family, a lot of mouths to feed. My dad worked a full-time job, and my mom used to work a part-time job, and I remember even as a little boy, um, how she would be up first thing in the morning fixing my dad breakfast. He'd go off to work. Then she'd go off to work. She worked part-time. She'd come back later in the day. 
when I got out of school, or the other kids got out of school as well. And then she cleaned, and then she cooked for supper, and then she stayed up after that, doing the dishes and cleaning up after. I mean, she was the first one up and the last one in bed, and she worked harder than anybody in the house. I couldn't recognize that in those days. Um, I think my dad did. Uh, I'm sure he, he did as the years went by, but that is a woman of virtue. Why, because she's so talented? No, because she operates out of love. And this is kind of the, the summary point of all that I'm saying, is that the things that moms do for their family, for their husbands and for the children, are done for what? Because she, you know she gets a, a paycheck every week? Probably not. Uh, I remember reading some, something somewhere that if you actually tallied up all of the work that uh, a mother does in a family, and paid her mi minimum wage, she'd be like a millionaire by the, you know, in 40 years or something, because she's constantly working and constantly making sure that those that she loves are cared for, protected, um, and provided for in all ways. So she may be have an occupation. Um, she may be, um, you know doing things outside of the family that benefit the family. But one of the key points of a virtuous woman and a virtuous mom, and my mom was like this, is that they're always showing charity towards the poor. That's in verse 20. My mom, every Christmas, used to gather all the kids in the neighborhood. Uh, on Saturdays, we'd get together, and she would lead us through practicing Christmas hymns. And then we'd practice for like four weeks, and then we'd go around the neighborhood, and we'd sing Christmas carols. And it was the coolest thing but it was, looking back on it, it must have been one of the most difficult things for her to do. She, every year she would say, I'm not gonna do it, and every year she would do it, and I'll tell you why. It wasn't because she got any great reward out of taking 20 screaming banshees and trying to teach them how to sing, oh, you know, Silent Night, or oh, come all you faithful. It's because those kids in the neighborhood looked at my mom as a mom. And my mom had that gift. She was a surrogate mom to so many. And many of you women out there, you might not have biological children, but you are moms to children and maybe even to young adults and maybe even adults that are in your circle of influence. So, you know, again, I'm not speaking just to moms who have biological children, but you moms have great power to influence those people around you. My mom was a mom to everybody. If I brought somebody over my house, a friend over, I would always tell them before we go in the house, listen, let me tell you, when you go in the house, my mom is going to hug you. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. Just relent and let her hug you. And, you know, the first time, some of my friends were always like, oh, man, that's weird. Really? But I'll tell you what, every time they came back to the house, the first thing they'd be looking for is a hug from my mom because she, she gave you the hug of a mother and a mother's hug that was full of love. So moms, wives, young ladies, women everywhere, you are praiseworthy. And I want to speak to kids and husbands right now. You need to be praising your mother and your wife. It is so easy to take for granted what they do for you every single day. I'm speaking to myself here as well. The, the love of a mother and the love of a wife and the work and the effort that they put in to provide for the family in so many different ways is deserving of your praise. Do this. I mean, it's Mother's Day, right? So hopefully you went out and got a card for your mom, and maybe you got a card for your wife. Well, today's a special day. But in the coming week, let me challenge you to find reasons to praise your mom or to praise your wife or praise the special woman in, in your life. It doesn't need to be hokey and weird, but you know what? Just, honey, I just want you to know how much I appreciate the fact that, you know, you get up and you make me coffee in the morning or you make dinner or you know, whatever the routine is in your house, find reasons to praise your mom, kids, and wives, men, and those women around you, because they are doing those things for you out of love. A man would be wise, and we're coming in for landing here, a man would be wise to seek a virtuous woman in whom his heart can safely trust, and he would be a fool to give his heart to many women and this is in um, verses 2 and 3. He would be a fool to give his heart to many women or to strange women. It's funny that the Bible uses the word strange. It does. It, I won't go into detail about what that means. But so here you have a virtuous woman and here you have the strange woman. So stay away from the strange woman. All right. I, I've known some pretty strange women uh, in my day. Um, 
the virtuous ones are better, I can tell you. Um, so stay away from the strange woman who will draw him into debauchery, disgrace, and destruction. Uh, think with your brain, guys. Think with your brain. Think with your heart. All right, let everything else just um, keep its course. If you can find a virtuous woman, then you have a life of reward ahead of you, a, a life of peace. I'm not saying it's, it's never, you know, it's all just a tiptoe through the tulips and a bed of roses and so forth. But I'll tell you, if you find a woman who God has blessed you with, who is a virtuous woman, according to what scripture is laying out here, not perfect because there is no perfect anybody, no perfect human beings. There was only one, his name was Jesus, and we're waiting for him to come back. Um, so if you read Proverbs 31, you think I could never measure up to that. You do measure up to that because that's not, that's not you comparing yourself to that, what that scripture is saying. It's God looking at you and saying, that's what I see. That God looks through that scripture at you, woman, mom, wife, young woman, and says, I see a Proverbs 31 woman in you. And so we all have a standard that we're trying to achieve. Um, Jesus is our ultimate standard. But, you know, we, we work to be better at serving God, serving the ones we love, serving, serving our family, and honoring God in all things. Closing scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. It says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. To honor means to ascribe um, uh, praise and worthiness and gratitude. Give honor to your mother and father. And there's a promise that comes with that if you do that. And that's found in Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and mother. It's repeat, repeated because Ephesians is quoting Exodus. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. Find a virtuous woman, get married, have a family, honor that woman, and God will bless you in the land that he is giving to you and you will live long in it. So there's long life. Um, I was talking to a man, I can't, not too long ago, and it came up how long you've been married. He said, uh, well, you know, been married 10 years, it feels like 30. Like, I don't want to be that guy. I'm not that guy. And I don't want any of you out there to be that guy. I'm looking forward to living a long, happy, healthy, uh, rewarding relationship with my wife, who is also a mother. Um, because when you line up with what God is saying his word, and when we practice what God tells us to do, there is goodness and wholeness in that. Amen? Okay, so takeaway point. Guys, girls, number one. Find reasons to praise your mom and let her know how much you love her. Let her know how much you appreciate her. T tomorrow, today is okay, but today's a cheat day. It's next week and the week after and the week after and the week after that I challenge you to let your mom know and your wives know how special they are to you. So God bless you. Um, we're going to get ready and we're going to close out the service today in just a moment. Um, love you. Can't wait to see you all back here in church again. Amen and amen. Hey guys, this is the time where we take up our offering. And this is, I love the offering so much because it gives us an opportunity to show our faith, to be bold, um, to support our church. And so many of you have been supporting our church. And it's been such a blessing because it's going to allow us to continue this mission of ours to bring the message of Jesus. And so many of you have been continuing to pour into it. And we thank you so much for that. You can um, give your offering through our website, justchurch.net. Um, we have a PayPal um, thing you can do there. And you can also send it to a PO box and we'll have it on the screen right here somewhere. Kevin will put it there. Um, and I'd just like to pray over our offering right now. Father, thank you for all the people who have been pouring into this church to support your mission, your love, God. We just pray that the offering is, is not something we take for granted, but that we we use it to continue your mission, to bring your word to the people. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, that was an awesome Sunday morning. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we can feel your presence here tonight. And we love you all. I want you to know that. Can't wait to see you all again. Moms, we love you. 
so much. Give your mom a hug. Give your wife a hug. Give your daughters a hug. Let them know how much you love them and how much you care about them. Let's just go forward today as we leave in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you for this awesome worship team, for the awesome worship that they produce, for the spirit that's here tonight. Lord, the spirit that is present right there in everybody's living rooms uh, this morning. God, we pray that you do, again, bless our moms and our wives and the women that are so important in our lives. We give you thanks for them, and we pray that you would help us to um, just have an abundance of gratitude and thankfulness and praise for them. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If um, Pastor Rachel and John were here uh, this morning, they'd say, love ya, Mwah. but since it's me, Love ya. Woo 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 Yeah.